you may give her away. I want to stay up here. I know you do. You got to go, Steve. <laughs> John William Gleason III, will you take Nicole Maria Dami to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to her as long as you both shall live? Please respond, I will. Nicole Maria Dami, will you take John William Gleason III to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself unto him so long as you both shall live? Please respond, I will. I will. Okay. And now we're going to have some readings from John's sisters. Good evening. How falling in love is like owning a dog by Taylor Molly. First of all, it's a big responsibility, especially in a city like New York. So think long and hard before deciding on love. On the other hand, love gives you a sense of security. When you're walking down the street late at night and you have a leash on love, ain't no one gonna mess with you. <laughs> because crooks and muggers think love is unpredictable. Who knows what love could do in its own defense? On cold winter nights, love is warm. It lies between you and lives and breathes and makes funny noises. Love wakes you up all hours of the night with its needs. It needs to be fed so it will grow and stay healthy. Love doesn't like being left alone for long, but come home and love is always happy to see you. It may break a few things accidentally in its passion for life, but you can never be mad at love for long. Is love good all the time? No, no. Love can be bad, bad love, bad, very bad love. Love makes messes. Love leaves you little surprises here and there. Love needs a lot of cleaning up after. Sometimes you just want to get love fixed. Sometimes you want to roll up a piece of newspaper and swat love right on the nose. Not so much to cause pain, just to let love know, don't you ever do that again. Sometimes love just wants to go out for a nice long walk because love loves exercise. It will run you around the block and leave you panting, breathless. Pull you in different directions at once or wind itself around and around you until you're all wound up and you cannot move. But love makes you meet people wherever you go. People who have nothing in common but love stop and talk to each other on the street. Throwing things away and love will bring them back again and again and again. But most of all, love needs love, lots of it. And in return, Love loves you and never stops. A reading from Bread for the Journey by Henry Nguyen. Many human relationships are like interlocking fingers of two hands. Human relationships are meant to be like two hands folded together. They can move away from each other while still touching with the fingertips. They can create space between them, a little tent, a home, a safe place to be. True relationships among point, people point to God. They are like prayers in the world. Sometimes the hands that pray are fully touching. Sometimes there is distance between them. They always move to and from each other, but they never lose touch. 
They keep praying to the one who brought them together. <laughs> You know, as we have um, had our, I guess you could say, our times together at our house, at your house, and um, just talking about why you want to get married, you know, why you're in love, and what your goals are and your, your aspirations are for one another, um, I wanted to, I guess there's a lot of different ways I could have gone, but I, I want to talk to you about a couple minutes, really, at the end of the day, you're going to be one. The two will become one. And, you know, you, you look at the author of Proverbs, and he says this. He says, three things are too wonderful for me. Four, I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with a maiden. A man will do crazy things for love, won't he, John? Yeah. You even got a haircut. I, I love that. And our Lord himself said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Now, you know, if you were in the CSI world, you'd think, well, my flesh would be my offspring. You know, if they did a DNA analysis, they're going to find out that they're my kids. But if they did a DNA analysis of you and you, you're not related, hopefully. Oh, brother and sister. Okay, then we got another problem. But in God's eyes, that is becoming one. It's not your children for as beautiful and as wonderful as they're going to be. They're, they're given to you on loan by the Lord until they make their own home. But you two will be together for the rest of your life. And I guess my encouragement is I want you to know that you're entering into more than an understanding. You're entering into more than a partnership, because when this is all done, when this ceremony is done, and you go back to your life, and you could start getting tired of things, and start thinking, ah, okay, I know I'm in this, I know I gotta follow through with this, but there's just, there's no joy, there's no, there's no life, and you might end up even settling and going, well, he does his thing, and I do mine, and we're happy. I want to tell you, don't settle. Don't look at other people and say, well, we're better than they are. You know what? I want you to look at people who have been married for 20, 30, 40 years, and they're not just committed to one another, but they enjoy one another's company. Your parents, they've been married for 55 years, and they still love one another. I know, they look pretty good. I know. But, you know, I could, we all know that I could tell you, yeah, I wish, I wish that the, uh, the road before you is going to be smooth, that the trials are going to be far and few between. It's not going to be. There's going to be tough times. But what I'm telling you is of more value than silver and gold. If you do this thing right, and by right I mean if you prefer one another, if your goal and aim is, and desire is for the other person, if your joy is to see your spouse fulfilled, then truly you have surpassed an understanding or a partnership. You have become one. Now, that's easier said than done because at our core, we, we're ruthless, we're selfish, we're insecure, we're sinners. But there was a man who walked among us 2,000 years ago who not only led us in sinless life, but he promises all those who come to him and who follow him and who fall on his cross, he will give the same love that he has 
for us. So your love is going to mature over the years. And you might have an idea of what that's going to look like. But your idea and the Lord's idea are two different things. And love, when we speak of love, even in America, it's so muddled. In the Greek, there were three main types of love. There was eros. That was a physical attraction to one another. Obviously needed. That's a good type of love. Then there's a higher type of love, and that's phileo. It's brotherly love. It's camaraderie. It's you two are in a foxhole together. You two are doing things together. You're enjoying one another. But you know, at the root of those types of love, it's still, what am I getting out of it? What, how is he making me or how is she making me feel? And you can run your life and your relationship on your feelings. And if you do that, it's like running a train backwards. You can't do it. Your commitment to one another has to be the bedrock in which you guys are committing your life to one another. Okay? Now, you can go about fulfilling that commitment to one another one of two ways. Let's imagine that you've got a, a big tree, a big tree to cut down. But the only thing at your disposal is a worn out old handsaw. It wouldn't be long before you got pretty discouraged. How am I ever gonna do this? How long is it gonna take? This, there's no joy in this. But you know what? Some people are content to go at it and to saw away their whole life, but it's very tedious. That is the power of your love that you have for Nicole and the power that you have for John. But there's another type of love. And in the New Testament, it's hardly found anywhere else in Greek writing. It's called agape love. And agape love is God's love for us. I can only, I'll give you one small example. When all of my children were born, I was there for all of them. And I cried like a baby when every one of them was born. Now let me ask you, what did they do for me at the moment that they were born? Nothing. Well, they made my wife big and she threw up and cost me a lot of money. Didn't matter. I just loved them. And it didn't matter how they looked or what they did for me. I just loved them. That is God's love for us. And that's the love that he has available. If you surrender to him, he can give his love to you to go to John. That would be like, you know that tree I talked about? Instead of using a, a worn out old handsaw, be like using a big, nice, sharp chainsaw. So my advice is use the chainsaw, okay? All right, at this time, Nicole and John would like to do their own vows. John, there is nothing more that I want in this life than a partner to walk alongside, share my experiences with, passions with, and heart with. You are the man that I choose to give myself to. You are the man I was hoping for. You have been an amazing partner these past four years. You have been my constant joy and happiness. You are the reason I smile. You have always been there to love me, protect me, support me, and take care of me. You have been my rock that has never faltered. From this point on, I promise to work with all my strength and to stay true to these vows I have written. 
I promise to stand by your side through happiness and sorrow. I promise to make decisions not based on my needs, but our needs. I promise to encourage your passions and love what you love, even if that includes going to all the Star Wars and all of the Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to love you with all of my heart and always give you my best. I promise to put us first and to work to keep our spark alive. I promise to take care of you when you're sick, pull you up when you're down, and give you an endless amount of rides to work when your car is broken down. <laughs> I promise to laugh with you and smile with you as we take on this adventure called life. John, I can't wait to start our life together. You were the missing piece I was looking for, and I am proud to call you my husband. I love you. Nicole, to say that you are everything to me is a severe understatement. You have truly been a major positive influence on my life for the past four years. Your ability to push me and encourage me to constantly do my best is an amazing trait, and the lights have gone out. <laughs> I guess we're done. I guess we're doing it in the dark. All right. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess they'll see it. <laughs> Thank you for the light. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Just kidding. Little teaser. <laughs> okay. It's so live theater, everybody. Live theater. <clears throat> uh, where was I? <laughs> Um, your ability to push me and encourage me to constantly do my best is an amazing trait and has gotten me to where I am today. You are my shoulder to lean on. You are the cool breeze on a hot summer day. You are the blinking light directing me back into the safe harbor when the seas are rough. You are the double knot on my shoelace. You are the Batman to my Robin, because you're the boss. You always make me feel comfortable and know that everything will be okay, no matter how stressful it may be. I promise to continue to be your best friend and even better husband forever. I promise to not only hear everything you have to say, but listen too. I promise to always make sure there is a smile on your face and find new ways to make you laugh, like really laugh, like that one laugh you do that means you can't breathe. <laughs> I promise to always tuck you in at night and kiss you goodnight to make sure you are cozy before you drift off to slumberland. I promise to always keep an eye out for snakes while walking through a park, but never point them out, just simply guide you a different way. <laughs> I promise whenever I see you trying to lift something really heavy, to always be there to say something encouraging. <laughs> Thank you. I promise to continue to find new ways to show you how much I love you. I promise to always help you get things off of the higher shelf. I promise to always dance with you, no matter if anyone else is watching, or dancing, or even around. I promise to always tell you how beautiful you are, both inside and out. And I promise to always follow life rule number 247. Enjoy the little things. I love you. John, please repeat after me. I, John, take thee, Nicole, to be my wedded wife. I, John, take thee, Nicole, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. I pledge myself to thee. I pre pledge myself to thee. Please repeat after me, Nicole. I, Nicole, take thee, John, to be my wedded husband. I, Nicole, take thee, John, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Till death do us part. 
So thus do us pray. I pledge myself to thee. I pledge myself to thee. Do we have some rings? As I hold these in my hand, I just want to pray for John and Nicole. Lord, I know, Lord, that these rings are a symbol of the love that they have for one another. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would lead them, would guide them, would establish their household, Lord God, from this day forward. And I thank you, Lord, for the things that you're doing in their life. Okay. John, place it on her left. And repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Nicole, place that on his, and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now at this time, John and Nicole are going to have a unity candle. As much as John and Nicole have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God by the power vested in me in the state of Illinois and the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. John Gleason. Okay. <laughs>